Hello, I am Najib Hassan from Maulana Azad National University. I welcome you to the online course on astronomy with archival data. In this session, we look at some astronomy essentials, namely coordinate systems. On a clear night, when we look at the stars, they appear to be studded on the surface of a sphere with the observer at the center. Since the distances of stars from the observer is very large, our eyes cannot perceive that they are at varying distances. However, we can measure very accurately with aid of instruments, the angles subtended by the observer between them. There are ways of determining distances to the stars or celestial objects, which we shall be seeing as we proceed ahead. But for now, we will be concerned with positions on the surface of the celestial sphere. So this picture we have an observer and around him he imagines a celestial sphere. We have these stars in yellow which I had varying distances from him, but he perceives as though they're all sitting on the hemispheric dome around him. Before we proceed with coordinate systems, I would like to talk to you about a little bit about spherical geometry. If you take a sphere and bisect it by a plane, you get the cross sections you get are circular. Any plane which passes through the center of the sphere cuts the sphere in a great circle. And if it passes through the, the celestial sphere, but not through the center, it they makes small circles. In this picture, we have these circles in orange, great circles, because the planes are passing through the center of the sphere. And the one which you see in blue is the small circle. The shortest distance between two points on a sphere is along a great circle. So great circles are equivalent to straight lines on a sphere, which are also called the geodesics. We can construct spherical triangles using these great circles. For example, in this picture we have here, a, a great circle made up of arcs AB, BDP, and PCA. This forms a spherical triangle. And we can do geometry on that as we have done it in uh, Euclidean geometry, but this is spherical geometry where Straight lines are great circles on the surface of a sphere. And we can get a variety of relations. For example, the sine formula comes out exactly as it is, as in the planar case. Some results would change, but some re remain the same. So if in this picture we have A, C, P as a great circle, so is B, D, P. And the angle between these two uh, straight lines at P are the tangents which you draw at PCA at P and PDB at P and the angle between the tangents would give you the angle at P. Right, so using that we have the formula sine A by sine small a, that is sine at the angle A here by sine of this arc here, would be same as sine of the angle here and sine of this arc AP and sine P by sine of arc AB. So there are many such uh, results which we can obtain, but we shall not get into this now, but rather get into positional astronomy right away. So the first coordinate system I would like to discuss is the horizontal coordinate systems where we use horizon as a reference plane. So we have in this picture here an observer 
standing on some point on earth and the point right ahead on top of his head is the zenith which we mark it by z the observer is at o zenith is the point right overhead and if you take a plane and bisect the celestial sphere yeah take a plane which is perpendicular to oz and bisect the celestial sphere the surface which we, plane which we get here is called the horizon so i have marked the region below the horizon which is not visible to the observer by dash lines while what he observes is what he sees above the horizon so uh, and if p is the location of the polaris the pole star you draw a great circle joining the zenith p all the way down and the point where it meets the horizon is called the north the side diametrically opposite is the south if the observer is facing north 90 degrees on his right will be east and 90 degrees on his left will be west so if we need to give the coordinates of the star x we draw a great circle from the zenith point z x and see where it meets the horizon and the angle a o x is called the altitude is the angle above the horizon and uh, which is denoted by small a and for the other coordinate we measure the angle subtended by the o n the north point to where this a meets this n o a gives you the azimuthal angle right so you have you measure it eastwards and all the way 360 degrees there are some people who measure you say 30 degrees azimuth east 30 degrees azimuth west or you have 0 to 360 degrees measured conventionally in the east direction so using this altitude and azimuth we can give location of this point uniquely in fact any point in the sky can be uniquely determined by altitude and azimuth this is called the horizontal coordinate system uh, i have the same picture here i have removed the earth below to make it more clearer okay so the point is you have this object which whose position you want to seek denoted at x you draw a great circle from the zenith via that object and see the point where it meets the horizon and the angle aox is the altitude and the angle aon measured in the horizontal plane gives you the azimuth when we draw the celestial sphere we should be conscious about uh, the latitude of the place so here i have p which gives me the position of polaris the pole star and if my location this angle from horizon to p should be the latitude of the place so if you are standing close to the equator or at equator then the pole star will uh, be at the horizon but when you are on the north pole then the pole star will be right above p and the zenith point will coincide the great circle which passes from zenith the pole star all the way down is called the meridian right this is also a great circle and is of much interest to us here again we are having uh, a celestial sphere and what we notice is that 
all the points along the LM circle, LXM arc, will have the same altitude above the horizon. The altitude will be the same for all these ob objects. And the azimuthal angle gives the point uniquely. The problem with this alt azimuth or the horizontal coordinate system is, as the observer changes his or her position uh, on the earth, then your hor horizon changes and hence the altitude changes, right? So we have two pictures here where uh, the observer is standing at a higher latitude here and the zenith, which is anyway the point right over it is here. And if you are having a star X whose position is to be measured, the angle, altitude angle is given by this angle. But if the observer changes his position to another latitude somewhere lower, then the zenith is in a different direction. And hence the plane which is perpendicular to this OZ axis is something else. So your reference plane keeps changing. Hence the altitude of the same object in, from two different locations would be different. So horizontal system is a convenient system, but it is a very local system. It works only when we are conveying or talking about positions, not very far from each other, almost around the same latitude. So instead, uh, astronomers use the equatorial coordinate system in which instead of altitude and azimuth, we use something called right ascension and declination. So in this, what do we do? We take the OP axis, O is the foot of the observer, observer, P is the position of the pole star, and we have, we look at a plane which is perpendicular to OP and extend it to meet the celestial sphere. 